So in the time it takes this cup of tea to go cold, we'll be taking one more look at the storage shelf project, checking out some useful tools, and I'll show you a fixing technique that I use all the time. Using these, blind rivets, or you might know them as pop rivets. While for some of you it might seem pretty obvious, it wasn't until I started putting things into these boxes that I realised I needed a way of easily drawing the boxes out of the cubbies, some sort of handle. I found these chess handles on Amazon which I quite liked. They're stainless steel and available in packs of four. Placed in the centre of each box, they make removing the boxes much easier and I think give quite a nice industrial look. Now you certainly could use screws or machine screws and nuts to fix these onto the boxes, but I really quite like this look that the blind rivets give. Okay, so if we take a look at the back, you can see there's quite a nice tidy appearance to the fixings. I've not used washers in this particular case or in any of the boxes. They're plenty strong without. So I've used blind rivets or pop rivets as you might know them uh, for many years. Before the workshop, I've spent most of my adult life building, maintaining and repairing boats and rigging. And these fixings are really used quite a lot in that particular application. So the pop rivet or blind rivet has a really interesting history as well. They were invented in 1916 by Hamilton Neil Wiley. He was an ex Royal Navy reservist and engineer. He patented the idea in 1917 as an improved method of setting tubular rivets, which is really what these are. He later went on to work for a company called Armstrong Whitworth, who made ships and aircraft, where this sort of fixing was in demand. While he was there, he developed the idea further into really what you see today, which is a single piece rivet with the mandrel and the rivet as one unit. The mandrel is discarded after the rivet is set. In the 1950s, the more common material for the rivet itself was aluminium, and that was at the time that the trademark pop rivet was registered, and that's really what these have been commonly known as ever since. But of course, to me, as a youngster, these were tiny little swords. Now, of course, blind rivets need their own tool, and they're really not that expensive. This example here is from Stanley and costs between 10 and 15 pounds. It's got a very basic pliers style action, and comes with a range of tips to fit all the common mandrel sizes that you'll find in blind rivets. Next up in terms of fanciness is this model here. I bought this recently from Amazon. It has a very different action, but still has the different tips to suit the different mandrel sizes on rivets. So this has an additional trick up its sleeve as the kit includes some threaded mandrels that enable you to set these which are rivet nuts or basically threaded inserts for sheet materials. Now there are other rivet setting tools. This example here is pretty common and you can also get pneumatic and electric riveters, but these are really very expensive and particularly beneficial to people that are doing this all day long in manufacturing. So I've got a bunch of rivets here of all different uh, sizes. The two key characteristics that you need to know about is that they come in a variety of diameters. Generally, the bigger the diameter, the greater the holding power. So they work very similar to screws and bolts in that regard. The other thing to note is that as the uh, diameter of the rivet increases, so does the mandrel. And that's the reason for having multiple tips on your rivet gun. The rivet length is determined by the thickness of the materials that are joining together. And a rule of thumb there is that you should be choosing a rivet length, which is at least one and a half times the combined thickness of the materials that you're looking to join. So let's get close up with some rivets. This one here is made from stainless steel. This one here is an aluminium rivet. And this rivet here is made from an alloy called Monel. That's a nickel based alloy and it resists corrosion in salt water applications. So it's a very common blind rivet in marine applications and I use these a lot when I'm repairing boats. Now installing a rivet is pretty straightforward. I've marked out where I want my fitting to go. In this case, the diameter of both the rivet and the hole that I need to drill is determined by the size of the hole in the fitting. Place my fitting back over the box and insert the pop rivet. I place my setting tool over the rivet and 
squeeze until the mandrel breaks off from the rivet and then it's set. So let's look at this from the rear. Now it is recommended with plastics that you use a washer behind wherever possible to provide additional support. But I'll be honest, for all of the boxes that I've made up to date, this method of just using the rivets as they are has worked perfectly well. And there we go, the plate neatly attached to the front. Now I came across this style of rivet setting tool whilst I was looking for a better rivet setting tool. Um, the issue with this, in my experience, is as you apply force, my fat hands get crushed between them. They're meant to be squeezed one-handed and for larger rivets, that's really not possible and I kept cracking my knuckles. This on the other hand, there is no knuckle clashing to be had. Okay, so setting this up for um, setting threaded inserts, you need the appropriate mandrel. That's an M8 mandrel and this replacement ring. You start by disassembling it from the prop rivet mode. Now that's loose. I think but you get a supplied spanner. Unscrew that part out. Okay. Now that goes up from behind and that slips on top. And then the new locking ring goes on like that. So the threaded inserts just screw onto the mandrel like that. So once the nut's set, then you just unscrew the mandrel from the threaded insert itself. So there you go. I've just set a threaded insert into a piece of sheet steel. Now as a woodworker, I'm not gonna use this technique very often, but if for example, my project was a van fit out, conversion to a camper van, or just fitting out a tradesperson's van and mounting shelves and linings to that vehicle, then this is an incredibly useful technique to be able to use. I think makes this particular tool really handy in the workshop. Now this video is not sponsored. I've bought all of the tools with my own money. If you want to support the channel, however, please subscribe and hit the like button. Also, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And there we go, that's the last one done. And I'm really pleased how this is now a much more practical uh, storage system where I can easily pull the boxes out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this look at pop riveting. I'm really pleased that I have this new rivet setting tool. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below if you wish to pick one up from Amazon. Uh, I love the fact that it has that secondary function of being able to set threaded inserts as well. Anyway, till the next video, take care, cheerio.